Wat Westu Hal and welcome to Learning Old English with the Word Horde, a production of Midi the Medievolution Project. I'm Richard Scott Noakes, uh, your host, and we're continuing our uh, lessons in Old English for people who want to follow along. Uh, this is our first attempt to podcast this. Uh, we've had several requests for it, and so I thought today we would give this a try and see how it goes. Uh, all the supporting materials I'm talking about here today will be available in links in this post that you're looking at right now. Okay, we've just finished up the chapter on pronouns, and right now you're probably thinking, I had to learn, you know, uh, seven different paradigms in the pronouns chapter, I'm not ready to go on to nouns. Don't worry about it. Uh, right now, you should be trying to memorize those pronouns. There's no doubt about that. And you're going to be getting a few more uh, paradigms to learn uh, as we look at the nouns chapter. But you'll also see that we're studying the nouns chapter for two full weeks, which should give you enough time by the end of those two weeks to, if not have complete mastery of, to have a pretty solid grasp on both the pronoun paradigms and the noun paradigms. And frankly, in most cases, there is a lot of intersection between those pronouns and noun paradigms. So for example, the demonstrative pronoun uh, say, uh, you'll find obviously paired up a lot with nouns and working together with the nouns. So really, we really intend to move on from pronouns before you're really, you've really fully mastered them. But by the time we get done with nouns, you really should have a, a really good grasp on both pronouns and nouns. Um, in my own class, we are a little bit behind in terms of vocabulary because the students were having a lot of difficulty in understanding how the paradigms worked, you know, what is nominative, what is accusative, what is genitive, what is dative. Uh, we put the vocabulary back a little bit, so in my class, we are still uh, studying the list for nouns three. So um, if you are uh, studying along, you may be already to verbs one, and if you are, excellent. If not, uh, you'll see in this post the new vocabulary. And let me just pronounce those words for you uh, to help you with your pronunciation, and also we'll look at what those words mean. Sunu, which is son. Fader, which is father. Modor, which is mother, Brother, which is brother, Sweostor, which is sister, Doctor, which is daughter, Lam, which is lamb, Hala, which is man or more often warrior, Mech, which is maiden, Se, which is sea, Horse, which is horse, and Suna, which is son. Now those vocabulary words are not very challenging, which is one reason uh, that I went ahead and, and put it back, because you do still need to be learning uh, these paradigms. And a lot of these vocabulary words are very, very similar to our modern English vocabulary words. Now just a few uh, words about the paradigms that you'll be studying uh, in the nouns chapter. You really should look at all the paradigms, but the ones that I think you should focus on the most are 6.2, which is strong masculines and neuters, 6.3, which is strong feminines, and 6.5, which are the weak nouns. Start with uh, masculine, neuter, and feminine for the weak nouns. Start with memorizing, start with memorizing those uh, at first. Uh, and you'll start to see how those, the interplay between those and the way that the pronouns uh, work. That doesn't mean that you should be ignoring the other, uh, the other noun paradigms. For example, if you look at 6.6, .6, the athematic nouns, one thing you'll notice is that this explains a lot about those weird, irregular nouns that we have in Old English uh, that are made plural not by adding s, but through some other kind of change to the word. And also, uh, when you get to section 6.3, minor declensions, uh, you're looking at nouns where there are only a very few nouns, like the use stem nouns, the nouns of relationship, the nouns with R R plurals, and the nouns with the thorn ending, where there just aren't that many nouns that use those. 
However, the nouns that use those tend to come up a lot. They tend to be very basic words. So if you think, well, you know, I'm getting less vocabulary if I study those words. Uh, in fact, you are getting fewer words, but a greater percentage of the nouns that are, you'll be seeing again and again and again, because these are, are very common uh, words that we'll be looking at. Don't forget to do uh, the exercises uh, that Peter Baker uh, has uh, um, on his website. And we'll, of course, have a link to that. And um, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask about them here in the comments section. And of course, I invite all of the, the scholars of Old English uh, who want to answer those questions to jump right in. Feel free. This is a, a site for the whole community answer those questions and maybe add to some things that I've said that you maybe think are important or make corrections if uh, I've said something that's wrong uh, and we will get through this together and if you ever start to get discouraged especially after that tough pronouns chapter just think of how much more you know about Old, old English now than you did just four weeks ago. Now this week we are going to at the end of the week start our first translation now you're thinking to yourself, I don't know how to translate. I know a few noun paradigms and I'm learning a few uh, and I've, I, I know a bunch of pronoun paradigms. That's not enough to translate. You've got to start somewhere and here's where we're going to start. So when we get there and you feel unprepared, don't worry. We don't expect you to be fully prepared yet, but you're going to get there and it's through practice that you're going to get there. So until next time, have a good time learning Old English, and I hope you're having as much fun out there uh, on the internet learning this as we're having in the classroom.